to today's webinar. We will discuss harm reduction. My name is Mark Taylor. On behalf of the Native Connections team and contracting officer representatives, Maureen Madison and Yandam Cooper, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. We hope you'll all share your thoughts about today's topic. So please don't hesitate to raise your hand, use the raise hand function or the chat box for questions or comments throughout the session. And welcome again to harm reduction. And I'd like to turn this over to Valerie to open us up in a good way. Thank you, Mark. Good day all, I'm in such a great spirits today. It's all this daylight that we're gaining day by day here in Alaska. And today I'm so thankful for that. With all the light, I am in a place where I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm grateful for my friends and family and also for this amazing work that we get, get to do with our youth, families and communities. And at this, at this time, I would invite you to bring to mind all the things that you're thankful for, or maybe even some things that you would like prayer for. And I'll give you a few moments to do that. And now I will lift those prayers and those things that you, and the blessings that you have in your life up with a Chupik prayer song. And I just love this. I just love this song. I just want to share it with you today. Liana, all for joining us, and I'll turn it over to Verna. A beautiful Chimigwich, Valerie. Always appreciate your beautiful Chibik words, prayer song for us, and lifting our loved ones up and us and our good energy and thoughtful ways. So Chimi a big thank you. Buju Ani and welcome to our webinar. Verna Mickelson and Dijana Kaz Kawaba Biganakagan Dunjaba. So welcome and hello. Glad to see folks joining us this Tuesday morning. And my name is Verna Mickelson. I am a proud member of the White Earth Nation located in northern Minnesota and coming to you at a balmy 20 some degrees. So looking forward to this gathering and discussing today's topic around harm reduction and looking to learn what others are incorporating in and what is working well in this area for you all. And so with that, we will look at today's objectives. And as you have them on the screen, the PowerPoint will be available to you following our gathering today as well. And so objectives today include those listed, increasing knowledge of harm reduction, learn the importance of harm reduction, gain more knowledge about harm reduction approaches, increase awareness on how to incorporate harm reduction in a community, and identify SAMHSA harm reduction resources and funding. With that, we would like to open up the chat box and please feel free throughout the duration of this webinar, please share your thoughts in the chat as some of you have started. Thank you for that participation. And it looks like on the monitor, as you can see, we have a question to start you off and that is to inquire, what does harm reduction mean to you? Please feel free to enter into the chat. Val and Mark will help us read those out as they come in. But what does harm reduction mean to you? Perhaps in your community, um, if you're using the harm reduction approaches, uh, what does that mean? Or what does it mean to you without that experience?
We have a comment from Aaron. Uh, meeting folks where they are at is one example. Aaron Kesham from the Seminole Tribe of Florida, Miigwech for joining us today. Meeting folks where they're at, very good, I like it. Thank you, Aaron. Um, and we'll talk more about that, right? And working with individuals to help meet their needs no matter where they're, they're at in that approach. And Terry being added, I, I feel it's practices and things we put into place to minimize negative outcomes or harm. Thank you, Terry. Carrie Dallas added so many examples and definitions. It's a good term. And Regal e Rita Eaglehead. Harm reduction means giving unconditional love to community members by doing culture camps, such as learning to tan moose skin, teaching them subsistence skills and traditional values. Thank you, Rita. Wonderful, thank you all for sharing and chiming in. I think I see another one popped up there, Val. Mary Lisa Huntington added, being available when a crisis occurs, Carrie Dallas, behavioral and emotional intelligence, Julie White Pigeon added, harm reduction seems to offer additional options rather than only abstinence to be able to get help. Oh, sure. Thank you Thank all for your suggestions. Those are all great answers. Great yes, answers. very helpful. Thank you for sharing those and opening it up for us around the discussion around harm reduction, Miigwech. And so with that, I see another popped up. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie's also sharing that intelligence is preventive and helps harm reduction harm reduction, sorry. Intelligence is preventive and helps harm reduction. Indeed. So the, the more knowledge we have, the more we can prevent. I like that. And SAMHSA has the definition on the screen and we can move into the next slide there. So what is harm reduction? SAMHSA defines harm reduction as an approach that emphasizes engaging directly with people who use drugs to prevent overdose and infectious disease transmission, improve the physical, mental, and social well being of those served, and offer low thresholds for accessing substance use disorder treatment and other health care services. In other words, harm reduction is interventions, right? It's intended to help people avoid the negative effects and the consequences of drug use. And again, engaging and meeting them where they're at on that path to recovery, as you've shared. I think we can all attest to the importance of harm reduction. Why is it important? Um, not only are we experiencing our most significant substance use and overdose epidemic uh, we've ever faced, we have um, exasperated by worldwide pandemic. We've also um, driven the proliferation of highly potent synthetic opioids containing primarily fentanyl and other analogs. So the need is evident, prevalent and consistent. And then there's also additional information from CDC, right? Shows that we have crossed the tragic milestone of a predicted $100,000 100, overdose deaths in 12 months from May 2020 to April 2021, which represents nearly 29% increase compared to the same window as the time frame the year prior last year. Significant increase, we've all felt the impacts. And this, this data shows us the rate of drug overdose deaths among our American Indian Alaska Natives is well beyond above the national average and recent data shows the trend continues. 
On average, 250 Americans die every day from drug overdose. The number of overdose deaths has increased over time with that sharp rise during the COVID-19 pandemic, including among American Indian and Alaska Native people. And our source cited there is the NVSS drug overdose deaths. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC again, um, those nation, the National Center for Injury and Prevention and Control is committed to comprehensive efforts to address the opioid crisis in, tri crisis in tribal and urban Indian communities. The harm reduction approach. Um, so again, many substance abuse treatment programs focus on absence only approaches. With this, while this may work for some people who are struggling with addiction, others may not be ready to commit complete abstinence and thus avoid seeking that professional help as a result. Not wanting to feel setting themselves up for failure if they can't abstain. And so with that, we look at some of the impacts. The harm reduction approach offers a path forward. Um, what are the impacts there and what are we finding? So the highly indi individualized nature of harm reduction enables people to minimize destructive consequences of substance abuse while meeting personal goals. And looking at weight loss, for example, weight loss programs, um, let's, let's correlate the two. So weight loss programs, they do not require patients to commit to an ideal body weight before beginning their regimen, their dieting and exercising or lifestyle change. You know, they, that would be complete abstinence and that, um, that choice then um, for harm reduction is a choice made by the patient, not a condition in, imposed by the treatment program. A basic belief of harm reduction is respect for the patient and their capacity for change. And that's an important topic. We, we need to consider an individual's uh, background, their, their, predis their um, factors, right, of what preceded their use and what has led to the, where they're at. Again, not what, what, what is wrong with you, what happened to you, and going back to um, the roots of what are their triggers, what are their challenges, and what can help work through and pro make progress through, through those. And so considering change, people sometimes very often struggle with change. Some of us feel very comfortable with it. Um, having worked maybe in our, our tribal our tribal communities, we see that change a lot um, with leadership, staffing, employment, different programs, different funding sources come in and we're, we can adapt. We've adjusted to some extent. Even those positive changes can be challenging. They can be overwhelming. And I think some of us can attest to that, you know, in the work that we do that always finding, you know, a new, a new next step to help combat some of the, the struggles we're facing. And if that is something you're comfortable with, that's wonderful. And for others, I know I have to remind myself when I know somebody's discomforted by change, to take that process with them and walk through them and meet them where they're at again. And so keeping that in mind as we, as we work through the next steps and harm reduction does exactly where the individual's at and where they are, their comfort is at in the next step. And so harm reduction approaches have proven to prevent the deaths. Um, they've proven to prevent disease, overdose, and substance misuse. And so again, yes, go ahead. Beth. Oh, I just wanted to add that uh, Carrie Dallas added that I feel that is a piece that is often forgotten. Thank you for stating that we must think of their situation. So if you were just adding to what you were sharing and thank you for your insight, Verna. Oh, thank you, Carrie. Yes, and I, likewise. And once we're mindful that we can we can remember remind ourselves, right? Remember to uh, to step into where this person is at because it's going to vary person to person, and the next person may be well 
beyond their um, adjusting of that the change that initial change and now meeting a new challenge rates and so again progressing with them but adjusting per person and so again just really understanding complete abstinence is a choice to be made by the patient not a condition imposed by the program treatment program a basic belief of harm reduction is respect for that patient and their capacity to change again Some basic harm reduction principles. So the acceptance of substance use in communities around us, as well as in addition to the delivery of non-judgment care. And this values all people as well as their journey. It minimizes harm through education and without fear of shame. And like it, it listed on the screen in this screen here, um, the belief that people use substances should be empowered to seek and receive quality health care regardless of their current status, use status and recognition of social differences. An example of that in a mental health crisis response, for example, we previously had, um, when I was a Native Connections grantee, we had a crisis assessment tool that we is still used and has been updated and adapted to meet the individual where they're at um, following state statutes for our, our billing purposes. Um, we were not allowed to assess and screen individuals if they were under current use, regardless of um, the substance, regardless of their capacity to, to comprehend and share in their treatment plan during that assessment. And so we, as a sovereign nation, we were able to determine that was not meeting our community's needs, that was not meeting the needs of the individual. We were meeting one-to-one -one that needed to meet, wanted to meet with the team one-to-one. -one. And so working around that, we could still use the assessment, we could still use our, our tools, that way we may not be able to bill for that service and that's not the point, right? The point is meeting that individual where they're at. And so we were able to do that internally. And so again, um, the, the program should not be based on abstinence. It should be meeting the individual where they're at and, and their ability to be involved in that assessment and treatment plan process. And that goes into those other services in the community. So examples include other of other harm reduction programs, the needle exchange services, safe injection sites, drinking and driving laws, and um, having available free condoms, things that are all together in one resource, one location. If you've seen those, maybe your community has some of that information. And please share if you're working in these areas and providing, please do chime in the chat and let us know what that looks like specifically in your community. Any comments in the chat, Val, as far as other resources in the communities regarding harm reduction programs? What might, look, what might that look like where you are? Um, nothing in the chat, but we can see why harm reduction is so important and why it plays such a significant role in preventing drug-related deaths in our communities. You know, other, other things it does is like you said, offer health care and other making making sure people have access to other social services like mental health services, school, you know, schools, housing, jobs, transportation, and even making sure they have access to treatment. Indeed. Carrie has added in the chat asking if there would be two types of change levels, urban, 
versus res. So reservation versus the urban setting. And Carrie shared that she just returned to the reservation life and things are included in harm reduction prevention seem far away. They're definitely different than urban. Assimilation further affecting the people maybe. And that's Carrie is apologizing if this is hurts anyone that, that is not the intent. And thank you, Carrie, again. Um, so yes, and others feel free to share in the chat. I see we have one more comment. Pres prescription take back days, another important one happening across communities. Thank you. Yes, Carrie, though, to speak to that area, urban and res reservation. Um, looks different. We know the setting and programming can look very different. And if you feel free to unmute and elaborate a bit, I can speak from my perspective, but I would love to hear more of yours if you're able to unmute. Carrie, feel free. And if you see her come off mute, Val, just let me know. Um, I She's know. Oh, good. Perfect, Carrie. Thanks, Val. Oh, Wopula. Yeah, I was going to thank you for this moment. Um, yeah, I um, left the reservation 38 years ago and just came back and it's a whole different world. I remember community. I remember people helping each other, lifting each other up, um, not pushing each other down. And um, sadly, that's what I've experienced. And so even as close as last week, Thursday, I, I was sitting on my porch at sunrise making my offering and asking for strength to continue um, to um, have that that strength. I'll say it again, have that strength to endure, you know, the continuous, you know, um, harm. <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's like what happened to our cultural teachings, what happened to, you know, all those things that we're connected, that we help each other. And instead of, you know, other, other sorts where, I've been living in the urban setting, working at Indian centers, Indian um, services and programs. And it's not as apparent to me in those sites. It, you know, it, nothing is ever zeroed out, but you know, that there is some, some stuff there, but it's not as evident in my face in the urban sites that I've been in where um, I've even been in urban sites where I worked at and there was, um, yeah, there might be disagreements, but people walked away feeling okay, you know, um, because everybody has a perspective. Everybody has a different mentality and sometimes others perspectives are very um, warranted and helpful and can, you know, can be considered. But as far as working with the people, you know, um, I learned early on that you have to listen. You have to be a listener, you know, um, because we're not, we're not the expert, we're not, you know, and that's what all these leadership programs that I've been in, included in, that I've been invited to participate in, that's what they always say, you know, leaders are our listeners, you know, and so I, I even have started going to a lot of our, our community, like um, leadership meetings here in our small community, and that's what I even see is in our community leadership is, is um, and I asked that this past Sunday, I said, I, ha I mean, it, it's really so apparent that I'm standing up at these, um, this, this chapter meeting saying, what happened to us? You know, why is there so much silo? Why is there no, you know, there's um, words, but you know, like they're just bouncing off of people. And so it's sad that, you know, that my home reservation town, um, but this is what I'm experiencing and I'm having to pray that I can have the strength to keep going because I don't want to leave, you know, I'm home. I came home for a good reason and I want to stay here. And I learned so much while I was out there in the urban settings that I brought back, you know, and I always state, you know, um, you know, they say, go get your education, come back and help the people. But man, it's not acceptable. It's not accepted. It's not like, um, I don't feel it is, you know, and um, <clears throat> it's, 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 uh, it's wears on you so that harm reduction is like out the window. Just a thought. Thank you. And I don't mean, again, I don't mean to uh, step on anybody's toes or, but this is, um, as they say, if you don't say it, it's not heard. And if it's not heard, nothing, no action, no, you know, um, we can't go forward. So um, I try every day to think, how can I help the people? How can we move forward? How can we um, say the right thing, do the right things and take the right steps in order to bring us back together, you know? So 
Thank you for this time. Okay, Carrie. Oh. Thank you for that. And I think you speak for many and you're sharing your voice. You're using your voice to share what many maybe are not um, comfortable or ready to express. And so for that, we say thank you in being um, vulnerable and allowing that opportunity in this space, right? And so that's why we come together to learn from one another and share in that way. And I We're think you just... Oh, go ahead. You're good, Val, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Carrie, for bringing those things, you know, that we should keep in mind as we work in our communities. And, and as somebody who works within Alaska, I just wanted to add that harm reduction does look different even, even here, you know, urban versus rural, because I'm sure like many of your communities, the resources are different. A lot of villages lack the resources that the urban communities have. Maybe they lack clinic staff, tribal police, um, they have to turn to the tribal council members who often st step up in their communities. There's the teachers that step up, the ministers who step up and other natural leaders and family and friends. And this is where culture plays an important role in our smaller communities. And we hear the term culture is prevention and it's things like fishing, berry picking, hunting, wood gathering. And this is the way I grew up to to leave our burdens and the things that you know that we're dealing with on the tundra or while while doing these different hunting and gathering activities. And that's that's just what I what I was taught from you know my father and from my from our tropic elders. Mm -hmm. And Carrie's missing that it sounds and many of our communities, Carrie, I think can attest to similar experience and the history of it. And I feel you on that last comment as well, <laughs> where we're at in our stage and, you know, um, the history that has got us to where we're at again, um, what, what happened, what happened to get us here and really taking time as a community to approach that, discuss it, work through it and plan around from that. Some communities I've seen um, doing some of that on the ground work, Carrie, that you're, you're kind of what you're speaking to brings to mind for me is the, um, the each village for my reservation is establishing their own um, community councils and some of the harm reduction and prevention work that's been happening at White Earth the last decade maybe plus, you know, a couple more years. Um, it's been ongoing a many number of years and was not um, well received initially. And people um, had strong feelings about you're allowing use, you're allowing this to continue um, versus the minimizing the risk with use. And so um, a lot of that has led to more culture, more culture as prevention coming forward. And I see that now taking shape in the form of community councils in each village. And those individuals are stepping up when they want more prevention training. They want more education. They're the ones um, calling that in. They're, they're scheduling and finding the location and going to council, tribal leadership, and requesting those funds if needed um, to help with some of establishing and planning for that. And so getting that support and really on social media, that's where I, I see things happening first is at the ground, you know, the community level, um, the people in the know, right? They're bringing it forward and sharing those out and bringing in much of the culture and education, connecting back with our traditional ways and bringing those traditional leaders back into action following the pandemic as well, because that of course slowed things and impacted and really hit our communities hard. And not only with the numbers we saw on screen through the PowerPoint, but also with those other losses, right? And so um, finding ways to come come back, come back and find our way through that. 
I just wanted to add really quick that I, I do recognize that some people, some communities feel like the principles and values may, may be leaving or we, we may be losing some of those. And just like Verna said, take that as a call into action. I, you know, I would encourage everyone on the call to take that as a call to action. Uh, that's why it's important for every, was, every one of us on here to, to be intentional to be intentional in teaching what we know, to be intentional about sharing what we learned ourselves because we can't rely on others to do that for us anymore. Rena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and so with that, let's move into the next video here Mark has for us. Thank you, Mark. by people who use drugs to save each other's lives. Here on 7th Avenue, right under the sun in Miami is Florida's pioneering syringe service program, the ID Exchange, where tools like harm reduction, advocacy, and compassion are being used to save lives. At the intersection, stories of research, compassion, and HIV services for people who use drugs. What is harm reduction? At the intersection where compassion meets community, harm reduction takes on a more active role to avoid negative health outcomes. And it does so by meeting the community where they are at. Harm reduction is basically bettering a person's life in the whole community. Harm reduction to me is being able to go to a place and get clean stuff to use and not have to like rely on like going to a street and buying it or like hoping you're getting something clean or whatever it is. Harm reduction is understanding the world of the other and immersing yourself in it for long enough to understand from their point of view, it's meeting them where they're at. Just like we meet people on the street with syringes, I meet my patients by, by kneeling down. You just have to do what you have to do in order to, to be on that level and be on the same wavelength of the people that you're taking care of. Harm reduction to me is making sure our our people here are taken care of. Harm reduction is basically just having a place to go to or people to talk to about anything and everything. Harm reduction is, is giving more because that's what they need in the moment. They offer like, you know, Suboxone to help you get off or whatever it is, like they work with you here. And I just think that's amazing because Really, we didn't have a place like that. Suboxone is a medication used to treat opioid use disorder. So the studies that show people who use SSPs are five times as likely to enter treatment. Syringe services programs like ID Exchange can provide a range of services, including sterile syringes, vaccinations, HIV testing, and help accessing substance use treatment. Nearly 30 years of research shows syringe services programs are safe, effective, and cost-saving tools that can prevent HIV and other complications among people who use drugs. Last night, that we started 12 people on Suboxone, and those are people who otherwise would not have had access to this life-saving me medication, and now they're on their road to recovery. Harm reduction is the first step in recovery. Syringe services is the first step. But now we have the ability to start people on life-saving medications for opioid use disorder. We're helping people in their recovery, but wherever they are on that spectrum. We have to respect the autonomy of our patients and understand that our one way of doing things does not work. We have to adapt and have a personal approach for everybody that we serve. Harm reduction is holding someone by the hand and saying, you're gonna come with me because I have the time to commit to you because you're worth it. And so what do you need? Do you need to go to detox? I'm going to go with you. Did you get them to the door? Did you follow up two days later to make sure they're still in treatment or did they fall out? It should be, hey, I'm in this journey with you. You've now met me. You seem to want to do something to better your life and I'm going to support you. Let's run that mission. Harm reduction is understanding and compassion and strength and very nuanced. Harm reduction, it's love.
Thank you, Mark, for sharing that video, spotlighting the harm reduction at the Idea Exchange in Miami, Florida, and their comprehensive syringe services program. And so the team there, as you see, just worked diligently to deliver that integrated HIV and harm reduction service to folks who use drugs and those in recovery learning from the research projects on optimizing that care mm -hmm. to achieve the best outcomes and so well so well depicted there in the video and yes here um, just really emphasizing that fact and I love this this quote that speaks to being empathetic and supportive and I'll just let you all soak that in acceptance, non-judgmental, empathetic and supportive to let them know we care and meet them again, meet them where they're at. And the next slide here uh, has the link and you will receive a copy. You, this copy will be available, um, but Mark, if you would click on the harm reduction link, we could take a look at SAMHSA's site and a list of information and resources available there. And I think it's really a nice, a nice bookmarkable page <laughs> if you would like to do so um, to come back and visit what some of these um, areas that are available via SAMHSA. And if you scroll down, Mark, um, towards the bottom, also it identifies um, funding and other resources available at the bottom and gives a good a good list there of what some supplies are. And I love that training services are at the top, educating our community members, see a lot of that happening. Um, back to that video, really integrated multidisciplinary approaches is what we're seeing at the ground level with different tribal nations, for example, incorporating in not only mental health mobile response, the opioid uh, prevention team, the harm reduction team, going out, um, providing on-site supports, following an overdose, following um, fatal overdoses, providing prevent uh, postvention support as a team. So you have your mental health, you have your prevention team, you have your behavioral health all in one um, on site and or setting up in each village, in the communities, setting up a, a location to provide services immediately. And unfortunately we're seeing this right now, this week in my community where um, there's been that that has occurred and so right away within hours they are set up and come together whether that's a talking circle whether that's over food or one-to-one -one, however that looks for each individual and being there to provide those supports and so some of these services harm reduction services identified um, really really work well when we combine efforts they just the approach. And then there's a nice supply list there that may be things we may not think of. Uh, medication lock boxes, again, um, things that help minimize the risk. Margaret also reminded us that SEMSA funding sources can also be find, found in the weekly digest, which comes out every Wednesday. Yes, we love our Thanks, weekly. <laughs> we love our NC weekly digest. Thank you for that reminder. Yes, and so again, the harm reduction approach via SAMHSA is an approach that emphasizes engaging directly with people who use drugs to prevent overdose and infectious disease transmission, improve the physical, mental, and social well being of those served, and offer low threshold options for accessing substance use disorder treatment and other healthcare services. So we welcome you to. Um, peruse that page, browse it, bookmark it, refer to that in the future. And Valerie, at this time, I think we would like to open it up for questions and any other additional comments participants may have. Yes, feel free to unmute or ask any questions in the chat. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Verna. I dropped that link in the chat box as well. In case, somebody was, in case somebody was not watching the chat box, the link's in the chat box too. Thank you, Mark. And then just as a friendly reminder, this webinar will be available in the Native Connections Resource Center along with the PowerPoint. You can come back to this or share it with your workers who weren't able to join us today. Julie White Pigeon asked, is harm reduction approach limited to only certain types of drugs? I imagine, Julie, that varies where we're at. And the SAMHSA focus with harm reduction there, um, Suboxone, I see it came up, um, so the opioid and other harm reduction approaches, I think, depend on the community, right? And what's available, what resources are local and or state and federal funded um, opportunities there. I think it really gets into the specifics and what that looks like for each community, Julie. So I don't want to say no. I don't want to say it's limited to any certain type. It's not limited. Yes. And I think that one, Julie, I see your last comment there on math being in the big issue on the reservation and that um, coming back to many areas. Yes. And I think it's just much harder um, treatment process and so uh, much more intensive right need there and challenging and I think that's an area um, much discussion is needed around <laughs> indeed when I see that Carrie has her hand up Carrie oh thank you sorry so I'm a former meth addict I was a nine-year uh, addict I went cold turkey November uh, 14th, 2000. Um, I come from a family of alcoholics. I come from um, a lot of, uh, you know, I'm not any different than a lot of Indian families, you know, that are out there. But I think about my uncles who were the alcoholics, you know, as far as harm reduction, you know, how do you help them? You know, do you give them more to drink in, in the morning when their head is, is, is banging? You know, as a meth addict, you know, what was the solution in harm reduction? give me a cleaner um, straw to snort with, or, you know, I just, um, I guess because I, it was culture that saved me. It was definitely my grandma's TT. One day I looked in the mirror and thought, I'm destroying what she told me was holy. I am killing what is sacred. How can I, um, how can I do this to myself? And that's when I went cold turkey and left everything behind a home and just packed two bags and left. I had to leave the environment. I had to leave the people. I had to run away to a place where I, I never knew I'd end up. And then I ended up um, working for a, a behavioral health treatment program. Um, people were court ordered there. Um, so I got to see all the different kinds of levels of acceptance, acknowledgement, people ready to change and all this and that. You know, and then I started studying. I went to school on vocational rehab um, with the disability of substance abuse and I studied psychology. And um, when I was in, I transferred up to University of Utah you know, you're learning all these theories, all these different um, philosophers and stuff. And I would get confused with Westerners concepts as practices and principles. And sometimes I'd even think, you know, are any people were already doing that? How can this be a new theory? <laughs> you, know, um, you know, and then um, times I'd end up at Sweat Lodge just trying to uh, uh, untangle the, the, the perspectives that I was learning in, in university and how it applied to people back on the reservation that I was, that I knew that were family members. And I would ask those kind of questions like, well, on the reservation, it's like this. And sometimes I'd stump the teachers, the professors, and they wouldn't have an answer, you know, on how to uh, work with our Indian people in these areas. So um, harm reduction, when it first surfaced and it started coming around, you know, give them needles, give them, you know, these things to help this and that. I just was like, I was in disbelief. It's like, as a former addict, how could I, I, I couldn't honestly think how somebody giving me an alternative would have helped my addiction. You know, I just, um, sorry, I have a hard time um, um, thinking in that way that, because uh, then I worked in a um, woman's um, uh, halfway house. And like I said in my comment, one of our clients 
I believe she was addicted to Suboxone, uh, just like she was her other uh, drugs of choices. And she would throw an outrage and out, you know, just get really crazy at us if her meds were not ready when she was ready. So I really am um, just sharing my experiences and my thoughts. So thank you. And I'd like to hear what people have to say, honestly. Thank you, Carrie. Again, good insight. And I, I, I look forward to connecting with you further. You bring so much good experience, valuable knowledge and opinion and strong voice again. So thank you for that. And others, um, any, any feedback for Carrie as well? We do have a comment. Sorry, I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name all, but they were, they commented, I love the reminder of leaving environments that are harmful for our growth, being from reservations that make it a little harder for some to see and be aware that we can leave and go anywhere else. Mm. And Julie added, McWitch, thank you for sharing your powerful story, Carrie. That was the crazy thing. I didn't know I could leave. I didn't know that I could change. And it was through the psychology studying that I, I really began to accept the idea of change, that I didn't have to continue the cycle. And so then when I would come back to family, I was really uh, ousted. You know, people were like, oh, you think you're better than me now? You know, and it was really a sad and sad place to be. So I often just went right back to where I, I was at peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think many of us can attest, attest to that, Carrie. And I just really want to express gratitude for you sharing because I think you voice what many of us echo and feel and can connect with and finding that through education and understanding and then challenging it and pushing for more change to get back to the cultural ways and bring those traditions in is so important. So thank you for highlighting that, doing that work and all that you do today to help going forward. Much appreciated. And many of you, lots of lots of participants on the call, soaking it all up and finding um, value in the conversation. So thank you for that. And again, if you would like to unmute and share, we welcome that. And yes, um, absolutely in the comments, I found my parents, grandparents, generation and beyond. It is a shame, almost stems from fear of leaving their reservation because of the history of traumas our ancestors typically faced when leaving. However, we can go now anywhere right and come back as as comfortable as we want right and so again going back to that what happened how did it get this way and what next what can we do next and that's the journey we're all on so thank you for that as well any other comments or your feedback as we conclude with the discussion around harm reduction Peer-to-peer -peer sharing, I love it. Thank you so much for that opportunity to learn from one another and for allowing us to, joining us and allowing us to share um, this information today. Val, with that, I think we can share upcoming webinar information. Yes, up, upcoming on April 11th is Evidence-Based Trainings, Youth Mental Health First Aid Assist, QPR Safe Talk, Connect, as it's a webinar around suicide prevention and post tension. Also coming up is the indigenous art and symbols and their relation to culture and wellness, which is scheduled for May 23rd. And then finally, the American Indian Alaska Native Parenting scheduled for June 13th. So mark those on your calendar as well, it should already be marked, but if you haven't registered, don't forget to do that. And you can always find the link on the on the Native Connections Weekly Digest. 
Thank you for sharing those, Bill. Tina Jackson is asking about the assist. Is it online? So Tina, this on the screen is what's coming up with the webinar we will share through Native Connections. It will touch on those gatekeeper trainings and talk about them, share information about them, assist the applied suicide intervention skills training. That is a in-person um, workshop. And you'll find out more about that on the webinar. Yes, it's not the training itself that's gonna be offered. This evidence-based training will just um, share a blurb or touch upon each of these trainings listed. So you'll, you'll learn more about each of those. All right. Carrie think, says to all of you, the work you do out there for the people, may we always be blessed by creator to say and do the right thing. Wopila. Miigwech. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Tina and Carrie, all the participants and all of our staff here today. Thank you so much for joining us. And Mark, if you want to pull up the last slide for that contact page, there we are. Thank you so much. Always ahead of the game. And we appreciate your time today and look forward to sharing this information out with the following. Look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Yes, everyone. Miigwech and Jigawapman.